So in this video, we'll be going over the tool change macro wizard, which will allow us to generate the M6 tool change macro. And uh, to do so, we can navigate over to our settings, configuration, uh, macro wizard, tool change. And here we'll have a number of options to choose from before generating the macro. So first of all, we'll be selecting our ATC or automatic tool changer type. And that can be set uh, to be linear, which is fairly common, uh, rotary with a DC motor or rotary with a stepper slash servo motor ATC. After you've selected the ATC module that you'll be using, uh, you can select the number of tools that you will have in that ATC. And next, after you've selected the number of tools, for example, you will have tools one through five, uh, you can select the uh, option for manual tool change for the rest of the tools. And uh, what this does is it specifies if there will be manual tool changes for tools outside the selected range. So this range that you have just specified in the previous option, uh, you can extend, so to say, uh, by uh, adding more tools in the program G-code which will require outside confirmation after the change. So for example, you can have uh, tool 10 or T10 uh, that is specified in your G-code while you have only specified five tools in the above um, tool number. And uh, both loading and unloading unknown tools is supported uh, for the manual tool change by the MyCNC application. And uh, this will require an external confirmation for the uh, manual tool change process, uh, where you will be effectively saying that the process has completed properly. Next, you will have the unload offsets for the X, Y, Z axes, and uh, those specify the particular positions for the load and unload offsets. And uh, those are typically set to be uh, some Z axis distance for uh, very simple round tools. So for example, when your uh, tool changer will come in to clamp them from above, so it's going to be coming directly downwards. Or you can have some X, Y, Z distance for a fork-like setup so that the ATC can move in properly and grab or hook the tool. And the movement sequence is reversed for loading and unloading. So, you know, uh, your, your movement will be flipped to allow for both clamp and release of the tools. Next, you will be selecting your slow speeds for the X, Y, Z axes, and those are used while loading and unloading. Uh, after the uh, ATC unit begins to travel from its offsets. Next, you will have a uh, release tool command sequence. And uh, here you will be inputting some macro for the release sequence after the ATC has been set in place using the offsets. So here, for example, I already have a macro uh, that we have written. So I can navigate to that macro, double check it. And once I have uh, checked it, um, I can navigate back and uh, enter it in this field right here. Then the next one is a very similar one. This is the tool clamp command sequence. And this will allow you to input some clamp macro. Uh, and um, these will obviously depend on your particular setup and will vary from user to user. Uh, typically, they are custom just depending on your um, movement strategy. Next, you can have a macro header and a macro footer. So those will add macros or things like, you know, headings, texts, commentary, uh, before and after the main body of the tool change macro. And uh, as I've mentioned before, we typically set the macro file name to um, M6. After we've selected, all of these options, we can click the Generate button and the macro preview will reflect our new macro. We can double check it, see that everything is correct, 
and after we're satisfied with it, we can press the Save Macro button. Thank you for watching. Visit our documentation at docs.pv-automation.com for more information.